3, 2, Adil. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are. And you still have the boredom to watch this show. This is Lucian Vosal with the Freedom Alternative. This time I'm here with Colin Stavri, better known to everyone as V. Welcome to the Freedom Alternative, sir. Thanks. And thanks for doxing me again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it really still a secret? No. Uh, no, my, my PayPal has my name on it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, uh, when I was talking on the Romanian language podcast uh, one week ago when I said that I will be meeting you, I was reluctant to utter your name in public. No, and then someone told me that, well, come on, it's no longer a secret. <laughs> Everyone knows it. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Plus, it's uh, Romania. What can happen? Uh, yeah, <laughs> th th that's absolutely true. Uh, but uh, I was still going to ask uh, this. Uh, why? What did you do? to get the attention of people to um, to try so hard to dox you? Oh, uh, the trolls on the internet. Mm. You know, mm. Eventually, when you grow big enough, you're going to get them. Mm. Mm. And when you get them, they try to get at you, you know, to, to get the reaction out of you. Mm. It's pretty much the standard. If you, if you don't get trolled, then you probably don't exist. Yeah. Uh, and I reacted at first, didn't know how to handle it, mm -hmm. and after that I, I learned how to ignore it, so mm -hmm. it went away. Fair enough. Yeah, my real question was, why do you like drama so much? Because you're really involved in a lot of YouTube <laughs> drama, mate. Uh, you and I are polar opposites on that topic. I stay the fuck away <laughs> from drama. When I see drama happening, I'm like, nope, nope. No, and that's probably why I'm I'm not collecting so many subscribers. It's probably one of the main reasons. Uh, but that's okay. I don't want to be popular. Drama. Why do you like drama so much? Because you obviously like it. it gives you yeah. money. Uh, well, it, no, it has to be something else more than just the, the financial incentive. Because you really like it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, why it, do you like drama? I don't know. I didn't gossip enough in high school, and now I'm making up for it. Mm. But uh, I do have a New Year's resolution. I'm going to donate twenty dollars to a cat charity every time I talk about drama from now on. Mm. So, <laughs> so I guess that that would be my uh, that would be time for me to open a cat charity because mm -hmm. I probably to... get a lot of shekels from you because you can't stand you can't you can't really help yourself. I need to start though. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, talking about drama is very uh, profitable. You make a lot of money mm, for sure, but uh, eventually. Uh, people will subscribe to you expecting more drama. Mm. And the moment the drama dries up or there's nothing to talk about, those people start trolling you because they, they want, they demand the, the product that they came there for. Mm. They start unsubscribing. This is why a lot of drama channels um, experience a sort of hassle uh, in maintaining a, a subscriber base. Like if you follow them, you'll notice like most drama channels, they, they go really high, they make a lot of money, and then something happens and they go really, really low. Mm. And uh, I want to avoid that. Like I, I just want to have like my boring V news with mm. that there, mm. just me talking about the news. You know, making stable amount of money, like twenty bucks, thirty bucks per day, and I'm I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, you've been trolling me quite a lot on the uh, Article Thirteen and Eleven <laughs> type of drama. Uh, so. Do your best to convince me why I should be afraid yeah. of the Article 13, or even better, why should I give a shit? Because <laughs> I keep on telling you that I don't care. Yeah, well, uh, I spoke with the CEO of BitShoot. He's a very mm. nice guy. You can talk with him yourself. Mm. Like, I, I actually encourage. I probably to will because I have a channel on his site anyway. Yeah. So yeah, I probably will. He he has a team of lawyers looked at the article mm. and he said he can't operate within the European Union if uh, that passes. Mm. So if the CEO of BitShoot tells me that, mm -hmm. and the CEO of YouTube Wojcicki, Wojcicki, Wojcicki. Wojcicki, okay. that's the correct pronunciation, she's Polish. Mm -hmm. Wojcicki, okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> if she, if you she's do have a problem with your pronunciation, mate. It, so it sounds a lot more cooler when I say it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> if she says that it's a problem and that um, YouTube is going to shut uh, down uh, the right of European people to upload, mm. um, I, I guess maybe she's right. And at the end of the way, if you can fuck with the European Union project, like take take it like that, you know. If you if you don't uh, do it for the moral reasons, then do it because you control the EU with it. Mm, mm. Uh, no, that's a reason on why I should uh, give a small shit in a practical <laughs> politics terms, but in moral terms and in technical terms. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get, all right, I'll convince you then. Uh, they want to have an upload filter mm. where everything you upload has mm. to go through the filter. Mm. And the filter can decide if your content is good enough or not. Now, I know you're on the opinion that it's practically impossible. No, it's not on the opinion. It is an expert opinion. Okay, fair I enough. I make my living off of data centers and I work in technology. 
uh, as an independent contractor, of course, because I don't, right. like, I don't like paying taxes. But uh, I know it is impossible. Okay. And it will not be possible, not in the next 100 years. Very well. But take this into account. Think about the morality behind signing such a law. Mm. Yeah, like, sure. what, what exactly do they think about when they and they normalize this? Mm. They, they try to desensitize the public from doing it. Desensitize, yeah, sure. But then again, this would be what the one million five hundred thousandth uh, immoral law by the European. I mean, all yeah, but now now you have uh, corporate backing mm. behind you. Mm. You got like Google that's investing money into making uh, this not happen. You got other corporations, so you might actually have a chance to win against this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, American corporations in particular have shown themselves pretty uh, <laughs> incompetent in winning against the EU. I mean, think about it, the EU competition law, which is one of the most retarded competition laws ever devised by mankind in human history. And Microsoft and Intel were incapable of forcing the EU to reform it. So why would this time be different? Because it seems that the EU is just le le led by yeah. uh, communist ideologues. Actually. Honestly, I think it will pass. Mm -hmm. I generally think it will pass. You do expect it to pass. Mm -hmm. And I think the average Joe is finally going to notice that there's something wrong with the EU when it passes. Mm -hmm. uh, the average Joe just wants to maintain his lifestyle. He wants mm -hmm. to go to work for his kids. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't really care about all of this nonsense until it starts affecting him. Yeah. Here in the Three Seas Initiative area or the Intermarium, um, the level of Euroscepticism is significantly lower. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, sure, there is people like us, there are a few others in Hungary, a few others in Poland, a few other, that do are very vocal about their, their Euroscepticism. But in general, the populace is significantly less Euroskeptic than, than in Britain, than in Italy, um, than even in, well, maybe not Germany, no, Germany is fully cucked, but then even France or Spain. Really? Uh, like France is more uh, The population, yes. The mm. elite, no. But the population is pretty Eurosceptic. Interesting. Uh, what, do you think that Article 13 might trigger a bit more Euroscepticism? Well, imagine this. You're going to watch your YouTube videos. Everyone does it, mm. right? And you, like, you, you want to watch some music on YouTube or you want to watch some shit and you're logging in and you can't. Mm. I think that will affect the public because they will want to know why can't I log into YouTube? Why can't I log into Facebook? Why mm. can't I log on to the Twitter? And they're going to look at it and say, oh, well, it's article something something from the European Union. Mm. And I think I, I don't think this in itself will cause your skepticism, but it will at least start getting people to be more interested in. Or at the, least to ask the correct questions. Yeah, more interested Such as in the why? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because now that I'm thinking about it, one of the reasons we as Romanians became really pissed off with communism, so pissed off that we helicoptered the dude, as in literally, uh, was because he was cutting into our food. Yep. Uh, we didn't riot when they were sending our elites to the gulags. We didn't riot when uh, they were uh, stealing huge portions of the national wealth to give it to the Soviet Union because potato. Uh, we didn't riot when so many geopolitical decisions were decided wrongly. Uh, we didn't riot when uh, when Ceausescu started inviting all of the world's dictators to have their militaries trained here, including the Yasser Arafat and other Islamists. We started rioting when there was no more food ration, not yeah. enough food on the table. Um, the internet today is sort of of very similar importance. Food for masses, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you take away the food, mm. yeah, a lot, a lot of teenagers, especially like, um, and, and there's also people who play video games, mm. like you know, again, like it's the daily life mm. of the average Joe. Mm. Um, you mess with his movies, you mess with his video games, you mess with the thing that he cares about, the hobbies, mm. which a lot of people might say, well, they're not important, but for the average Joe, it is. For that person, it is. And he's going to start asking the questions. He's going to start... Um... Yeah. The, I'm not a big fan of video games. Uh, I don't play video games. Uh, I don't like video games. But, on the other hand, thank God for video games. <laughs> because, think about it, the, seg the age segment 16-24, young men at the prime of their physical abilities not having video games. That's a recipe for revolution. <laughs> no, uh, not just a high murder rate, but a, a recipe for rev for revolution. I mean, because young people made revolution. Well, it's basically the question: like, could they replace it with something else? Mm. Right? Maybe they would watch the idiot box. That's why the television. Mm. 
was called the idiot box because you had people watching TV all day. Mm -hmm. Maybe they would have started reading books or yeah, something. Yeah, but once they have known video games, would they get back to the idiot box? Probably not. Probably not. Probably that's not. Why, yeah. That's what I'm saying, yes. Uh, so, yeah, thank God for video games. And besides, especially for people like me, agitators, but also for you, you're profiting off financially from that quite a lot. Gaber get his bit has been a go godsend. Yeah. Uh, about uh, three days ago, it's December the 4th when we're taping this. Who knows whenever I'm going to get to publish it, but... Uh, three days ago, I, I held a class uh, with all of almost all of the people that came in were um, were teenagers, mm -hmm. uh, or you know, were they familiar uh, with Gamergate? Uh, Romania? All of them started asking questions and found the right wing of the politics and found me and my ideas through Gamergate. Even yeah, though I, yeah. I I think I spoke about Gamergate once. This is why the left is traumatized mm -hmm. by it. They, mm -hmm. they realize that. And in January, I'm due to hold a lecture. At the libertarian club that are one that they want to invest in practical politics to change things in Hungary, uh, one hundred percent of the people that will attend are there because of the Gamergate. All of them were leftists before that. Many people don't realize it. They, Just they, how they, important yeah, they they diminish it uh, mm -hmm. because it didn't have an impact in the video game industry, but it did have a cultural and a social mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. uh, Which I don't, is strange because the the left is the one that figured it out that if you change the culture, you change society. Yeah. They didn't expect this. Uh, they're, they're still writing articles on the BBC, on The Guardian, on uh, like to this day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a misogynistic campaign. Uh, yeah. Who cares? I, I don't think it will ever happen again, mm -hmm. uh, anything like it. But something similar in history would be in the Roman Empire, whenever the games would not go. Mm -hmm. Like if you would take the Colosseum away from mm -hmm. the people would write. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. Like people are glued to their entertainment nowadays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, why do you think it would never happen again? It was because people uh, didn't expect the fact that uh, an ideology like feminism, which had a good reputation up mm -hmm. till that day, was such cancerous and so leftist. Uh, and when people started looking into it, they would find more and more. It was like the beginning of the thread. And you, you start unraveling the thread mm -hmm. and you find out more things. Um, and that's why uh, basically a lot of people got into it. But now everyone already knows. Mm -hmm. Like it would have to be either with a new ideology or something that people wouldn't know and they would find out more and more things. I can't imagine happening it again, to be honest. Mm. I do. Uh, mm. And the reason I do is because there are many other relatively popular ideas that are inherently idiotic, such as the notion that universal voting rights are, are a good idea. No, they're not. Mm. Um, such as the, the idea that the Nazis were right wing. No, they're not. Uh, there are many other uh, very popular ideas about recent history and, uh, and in general political ideas that are believed to be good and they're really not. So there's still room for, for even more, uh, dare I say, thought revolutions. I think like uh, the European Union, if the Article mm, the 11 European and 13... The European Union yeah. is a good idea, this particular... Yeah, if, if, if the, the article passes and mm. let's say YouTube does shut down in Europe and Facebook shuts down and all of that, then people will start like, uh, I don't know, a, a EU gate or something mm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it would either leave to the European Union uh, having to restructure itself to make itself more democratic uh, if it wants to continue the project, which I don't think it will. I don't think they can. Probably not, yeah. And the reason I don't think they can is because the European Union is founded in a, on a very similar structure. To the USSR. With the USSR, yes. And the USSR had the seeds of its own demise mm -hmm. right built in baked into the cake as the native english speakers would put it it's interesting how it will go down though because obviously it they will go, down. go down peacefully and they may go down via war but down will they have to go yeah. but, but think about if the eu would have an army now with what's mm. happening in france don't mm -hmm. you think like they would send pacification forces in order to beat the frogs a little bit would they yes would that be relevant uh, uh. well i can I, you I, convince a million Romanians to fight for Brussels? Mercenaries? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mercenaries. Yeah, Think about this. Who's going to pay for the mercy? Mercenaries are expensive. Oh, the VAT tax will increase. Mm -hmm. How much? You, you, how much can the VAT... Uh, what, what, what about the uh, divorce bill from Brexit? The what? The divorce bill that ah. Brexit has to... Uh, the, the UK has to give to the European Union. Do you know who will make the army? Mm -hmm. 
the immigrants. Mm, yeah, but there's still not enough immigrants, and still, again, it will still be expensive. What do you mean there's not enough immigrants? There's millions of them. Mm, yeah, but can you convince them all at best? And besides, of course, some, I'll tell you why. Some of the immigrants are are very old. Some of them are not able. No, I'm talking about the recent wave. Mm, okay. You know, do you know how you convince them? They mm. have no job. Mm. They they only live off the government. Mm. You'll tell them you don't need to learn the language. All you need to do is to serve in the military, you get citizenship, mm -hmm. you get a lot of money. Yeah, but there is still, there's already a scheme like that, it's called the Foreign Legion. Yeah, and it will be expanded to the, like the EU is built off the French model. Mm -hmm. They can have like the EU army that you're going to pay for it, I'm sure. And it's going to use the, the Islamists mm -hmm. that have arrived in Europe. Mm -hmm. Probably going to go through an indoctrination period to, yeah. to give them European values, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, that sure will work out <laughs> fantastically well because all we know that all of the educational projects of the EU, they will, all of mm. them worked pretty well, not. It doesn't matter, <laughs> they will try it. Mm. No, that doesn't mean necessarily it will be efficient. Of course not, but they don't need an efficient army to, go, to send it and project power in Africa or mm. whatever mm. the fuck they mm. want to do. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. On the other hand, it's going to be fun when we, you and I will be old, we'll see um, the elites in Brussels hanged uh, by a crane uh, and the <laughs> European caliphate being <laughs> proclaimed. <laughs> And we'll be staying here behind the Intermarium wall. <laughs> and we'll be watching from the free world and looking at it. You know what? I'm scared that uh, Romania will actually join Germany mm. rather than the V4. Geography doesn't help us. Doesn't in, help in, us, in but that idea. Didn't, didn't stop it in, uh, in previous wars. In previous wars, our neighbors were... were well, I guess you were right in that mm. part. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting to see, like, I don't see Romania um, siding with the V4. Mm. Hungary tried to give us an olive oil, and mm. uh, well, an olive branch, and they said uh, um, that they have an ally mm. in, in Hungary if they ever want to trigger, what is it, Article 7 against us or some mm. shit they want to trigger. Mm. Uh, I didn't hear a response from the uh, Romanian diplomats. Oh, there was one, uh, although um, not one that was very public. Admittedly, there is also a temporary problem. The uh, Romanian's ambassador in Budapest is a fucking idiot. I know the guy. I know him personally. He's a fucking idiot. Uh, he, not only does he doesn't have a diplomatic sense in in the way in the practical politics sense as they should, as the diplomats should, but also in general, he's he's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, so what was the response? Because I'm curious. Uh, okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but you you do have a very rigid uh, view of the V4 because uh, you're assuming that uh, the so-called V4 they actually agree on stuff. No, I don't assume. Don't. No, no, no. But they're they're at least populist mm. and they're at least anti-globalist. Mm. And I'll take what I get. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, on the other hand, there is also the the, the Krajowa group uh, with with us, with Serbia and Bulgaria and Greece, and backed by Israel. Mm. Uh, so um, what I see rather happening is a, a continuous collaboration between the Krajowa group and the Visegrad group, uh, which is a lot more likely. And all of and these two within the context of the Three Seas Initiative, uh, because that would make a lot more sense. Because yeah. what what do we have in common with uh, with the Three Seas Initiative overall. Well, we all want to be energy independent from Russia, which actually matters, yeah. as opposed to, you know, what what is the VAT tax? Eh, who cares? That can be... I care, I pay a lot of VAT tax. Yeah, I do too, but uh, it's one of the few taxes that I actually pay, so I would prefer it to be zero, but, uh, but in a realistic sense, the VAT tax is something that you can negotiate every other four years. Every time you can mm -hmm. change the government and change it yeah. as many times as you want. It's not something... But B, are you independent energetically from Russia or not? That's something important. That's and what Trump told Merkel. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, and, Mar and Trump is, of course, correct. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if Trump wants to fuck up with Russia, he's going to need Romania and Poland and Croatia. And, you know, the places that can actually stand on their feet, even if Putin says, you know what, I'm going to cut down the gas. Go ahead, mate. <laughs> I, I, you, do, you should sure do remember in 2012, no, in 2014, in January, Putin cut out the gas uh, in order to, he wanted to harm Ukraine, yes. but ended up harming everyone. We didn't even notice in Romania. Meanwhile, my friends in Sofia, in, Bu in, in, uh, in Bulga Bulgaria, uh, you know, they were freezing in their apartments. Jesus. Uh, so, you know, Bulgaria has a very strong incentive to join any geopolitical uh, initiative that ends up with, you know, non-Russian gas going through their pipelines. So it's it's very important, the Black Sea gas doesn't mm -hmm. go to the Russian mm -hmm. companies. Yeah, uh, well, it won't. Um, but uh, again, there is also the project to get the, pip the pipelines from 
the uh, outer coast of Israel uh, through Cyprus. Cyprus has its own gas, of course, and all of that through Greece and then from Greece through Bulgaria, Serbia, Romania and upwards to Hungary. Uh, that would also uh, tone down the uh, somewhat apparent Russophilia of some of the Hungarian elites. Because again, uh, and especially important in Slovakia, Slovakia, the prime minister there, uh, Robert Fico, he's routinely accused of being a Russophile. Well, he's not, but think he about has to kiss ass, yeah. Yeah, I mean, think about it. You're Slovakia. That, that's your first problem. You're <laughs> Slovakia. Your second problem, there is no energy at all in Slovakia. So, you know, 100% of your energy comes from Russia. Your second most important, or actually no, your most important economic sector is uh, car production. Most of your exports go to the former Soviet Union, but particularly in Russia. You can't really afford to be militant against Putin. Yeah, of course. We can here in Romania. Yeah, that's why Bosescu. Yeah, uh, that's why Bosescu went into the state Duma and basically mocked Putin at his, yeah. on his own turf. He could afford that because yeah. what did Putin do? Increase the gas price? <laughs> we don't import from there that much, and we don't export. Uh, many relevant things in Russia. So, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm looking also at the Ukrainian conflict right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to end up in anything. I think it's going to be a nothing burger. Mm -hmm. I don't think Russia wants to, to start another war. They already have a theater of war in uh, the well, Middle East. Well, they do want. The problem is, they ca can they? Because they war can. is expensive. It's expensive. And, and the thing they... with Crimea is that they, they have, like, Russian population in Crimea mm -hmm. that supports the regime. Mm -hmm. If they go into Ukraine, they will have rebellions nonstop, mm. and they would also have, uh, you know, uh, NATO and uh, United States, and Germany, uh, and other countries also uh, giving more sanctions. No, and not just more sanctions, but more military aid to the Ukrainian side. Yeah, there would be like a proxy war. Mm -hmm, of course, a proxy war that Russia cannot win. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, no, think about it. I know you don't like because you're uh, you suck at economics. <laughs> but Russia's economy is smaller than Italy's. I agree with you. And uh, no, well, you have to because it's <laughs> official data. Yeah, uh, I, I never disagree with that. And Italy could not hold Tripoli in yeah. Libya, one city. What, what could a, an economy smaller than Italy's? The idea that Russia can rule over portions, large portions of Ukraine or large portions of Syria. No. The only thing Russia could uh, actually have on the table is the nukes mm. and the fear of nukes. Mm. So it's basically like making sure people don't fuck with Russia, mm. but I don't think it can actually stage an yeah, invasion. Yeah, but nukes or... can be useful if you want to make sure that you stay on the map. Yeah. They're not particularly useful when you want to expand. Yeah, exactly. Because you're not going to expand with nukes. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's like if someone wants to attack Russia, they can always be like, well, we have the nuclear option and blah, blah, blah. But they can't actually form an offensive. Mm. And if they can, maybe it's like something small like Crimea or, you know, like Georgia or something like that mm. where they can... I've been to Georgia. Mm. Uh, and uh, Is it bad? Uh, no, it's a very nice place. It, <laughs> it, it instantly became one of my favorite countries. Uh, and it's one of those places where people will tell you in impeccable Russian <laughs> why Russia sucks, <laughs> why Russia should be helicoptered. <laughs> and why nobody should deal should do business yeah. with Russia because Russians suck. Uh, on the other hand, there are a lot of anti-Putin Russians who move to Tbilisi because at least in Tbilisi, thanks to their own version of Augusto Pinochet, uh, <laughs> Mikhail Saakashvili, uh, there's an actual free market there. And yeah. the, the country uh, gr grows economically in a, at a fan fabulous speed and the standard of living increases uh, uh, 50% uh, from one year to the other because there is almost no regulation and almost all of the new buildings are all from either uh, Eastern European in investments or dissidents from Russia who, uh, if they were to spend their money yeah. in Russia they would get uh, they would have those money stolen essentially by well, let's talk about something more relevant because mm. I don't think Russia is a uh, going to be like a military threat anytime soon mm. uh, I like your optimism although <laughs> I particularly disagree with that. unless you're going to have a civil war in Russia mm -hmm. then it's going to be interesting you know uh, but well that will happen <laughs> that will happen and it will be fun uh, uh, what, what do you make of the yellow vest in France because that's uh, uh, I didn't have time to watch them. oh I did have time to watch them. Uh, I'll, I'll bring you up to date yeah, really fast right so the French president uh, decided on yet another uh, fuel tax. Mm. And, uh, I know that, but what's been happening since then, I didn't watch the news. I yeah, know that the like, police went pretty yeah. bad on the pro protesters. 
which triggered the football fans to join it. <laughs> the football fans. <laughs> okay, so what happens? Yeah, what what happens is that uh, at the beginning, a couple of people started uh, protesting against it, and uh, the common leftist tactic employed. You know, they're thugs, they're racist, they're mm. blah blah blah. Uh, and eventually they grew in numbers mm -hmm. and then the government tried to suppress them mm -hmm. with uh, water hose in December, the, uh, you know, the weather that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, gassed them, mm -hmm. sprayed them, mm -hmm. and then more people showed up. Mm -hmm. And then the government uh, doubled its response. And now you have, I believe, the last time when I looked it was like 200,000 people or some shit. Mm -hmm. Right, go ahead. Yeah. You tried it again, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Man, these are really good. They're spicy um, pretzels. I never I never tasted them. Like, I'm going to buy like two bags when I get out of here. <laughs> and also, my, I'm on a diet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, the number of people there, apparently in France, two thirds of the entire uh, country supports the yellow vest. Mm. And what's interesting, I heard rumors that um, if Brexit doesn't go well, you might have yellow vest protests in UK. Mm, that so, would be awesome. So if this shit spreads, mm. it's going to be very interesting to see how the EU responds to it. Mm. Uh, I don't think they will. <laughs> mm. I don't think they will because uh, the EU doesn't yet have, have an army. The, not, not, not only doesn't have a new army, and I don't think they will anytime soon, uh, but they don't have the proper institutions to react to this in a manner that is relevant. No, they will start talking against it, which is Maybe. going to be awesome. Yeah. Because if you see like uh, European uh, Union oligarchs, you know, like people surrounded by abject wealth, mm. talk shit against the average Joe that goes mm. uh, to protest. We'll get you a lot more average Joes on the street. Yeah, not <laughs> to mention that in France, basically most of the people who are now protesting they're all a bunch of fucking commies anyway. I mean, you yeah. know, they, they voted yeah, you for can... high taxes and now, oh my God, we have high taxes. Uh, to be fair, they didn't have a choice. I mean, Le Pen was also high taxes. Sure, but they did have the option of François Fillon, oh, uh, which, <laughs> which they, they voted against. And they said, oh, the guy is too radical. No, the guy was a Thatcherite. He was like, no, mm -hmm. no, no, the state should get the fuck out of the economy as much as possible. Oh, yeah, last year they protested because uh, they have the uh, public uh, railway system mm. in France. And um, the uh, Macron actually said that this costs people a lot of money because mm -hmm. as everything that the state owns mm -hmm. goes into shit. Mm -hmm. And tends to cost a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, he basically said that uh, the only way to keep the system feasible is to constantly raise the taxes. And people who don't travel by train are going to have to pay. Yeah, they do subsidize those that do. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't actually try to privatize it. But he tried to, for example, there is a current uh, legislation which allows people who work in the railway industry to work all the way up until they're 60 mm -hmm. and they get a lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. And he said, we're not going to cut the people that are already in the system, but the new people that we hire, they're not going to, to get the same benefits. People mm -hmm. rioted. Mm -hmm. And you got uh, people like Antifa, mm -hmm. I believe in, in France, you know, like actual commies. Mm -hmm. Uh, and even now, I'm pretty sure like Antifa is with the yellow vest mm -hmm. simply because they hate the establishment mm -hmm. and they that they're against. Uh, yeah, uh, some of the most vocal <laughs> yellow vest protesters. This uh, I know for sure because my uh, political operatives in France they do keep me in the loop with mm -hmm. some of these things. And they were like, "Check out this stupidity!" And it was a guy who was who voted for uh, for Mélenchon, and Mélenchon is uh, to the left of Lenin. Yeah, no, but you, you, people need to understand that um, the left hates the establishment. Like mm -hmm. any any protest the against the establishment. The far left, for yeah. sure. The far left. The far right too, probably to uh, an extent. But yeah, but to a, to, a, to a lesser extent. I mean, what is the far right argument? Uh, the actual far right, not what the media thinks is far right. No, the, the actual far. Yeah, I'm yeah, the far right. It's nationalism, for no, example. No, no, no. Oh, you no, mean like the, no, the American no, idea? Of, yeah, no, no, the actual uh, far right. Anarcho capitalist. Yeah, 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 something like that. Although I'm not an anarcho capitalist, I'm on the far right in terms of economics. But in social terms, I'm pretty moderate. I mean, yeah, no, the government... Taxation has, is theft, yeah. Uh, taxation <laughs> is theft, therefore let's negotiate it in such a way that it will be small theft. Uh, <laughs> you know, precisely because, you know, I, I, fundamentally I'm a conservative. And because I'm a conservative, I, I understand that you cannot eliminate evil. You have to tolerate certain small amounts of evil, whether you like it or not. It's not no, you don't go into a purity spiral. Yeah, yeah. You can't, unless you want a full genocide or things like that. If you want something functional, you have to tolerate certain a evil. That includes mm -hmm. taxation. Taxation is theft and it's evil. So let's try to mitigate it and let's try to have it as small as possible. Yeah. So you know, that's a far right argument. 
So the actual far right criticism of the French establishment is you guys don't have anywhere near enough economic socialism, uh, economic liberalism. You don't have anywhere near enough of decent morality in the public space. So maybe you should try improving that. Yeah, so but, uh, that's the far right argument. The far right is not let's smash everything. The far yeah, left argument is let's smash everything. But it's going to be interesting because uh, I think the only way out for France at the moment mm. is uh, re-elections, mm. snap elections, uh, snap either election. parliamentary or in the best case scenario presidential. Yeah, the, I don't see Macron uh, resigning over Of course this. not, he's too arrogant. Yeah, yeah, he considers himself uh, what, what, Jupiterion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jupiterion. And, and uh, as a result, you know, I mean, he's somewhere on the, up on his mountain and he thinks about stuff and uh, you know, he's too important for the But what I would want is to, to have these uh, <laughs> anti-government protests, you know, spread throughout other European nations. Mm. That would be interesting to see. Mm. Mm. Basically get the average Joe. The thing with the average Joe in France is that they're not represented. Like in the United States, you got Trump and you know the, the energy from the the common man mm -hmm. went to, to Donald Trump was projected uh, thoroughly enough mm -hmm. all the way up to the White House but even when the Democrats are in power the average Joe still gets very thorough representation in state governorships in state legislatures yep. I mean uh, even in uh, even in California where we we tend to believe as to think of California as California <laughs> but nevertheless even there you have counties that are thoroughly Republican and they have Republican representatives and uh, and Republican yeah. uh, county councils I guess the the French way the the spirit of France mm. right now is to censor people mm. Pu push them out of the overtone window make yeah. sure that they're not represented and this mm. is what you get yeah you know, yeah. A, a lot of people suppression doesn't work yeah like a lot of people well it works if you have like for a tyrannical a government yeah yeah but only for the short run yeah if you terrorize people with the idea that if they go on the street they can have their family locked up or killed then yeah you, you're going to have you know uh, well the French <laughs> should know this better because the, the concept of political terrorism is a French invention. I know. It's one of the few insane ideas in politics that doesn't come from Germany. <laughs> because we do suffer from a German problem. Uh, the, the, you know, make Germany small again. Uh, five states, five different states with the different national government. That would be awesome. Uh, you know, Germany is a problem. But this is one of the few insane ideas that doesn't come from Germany. It's French. I know. Uh, and oh, ever since 1789, it's been killing us. Um, now let's go to something that you don't want to talk about mm. on your channel and uh, you can talk on mine because I, I, <laughs> I, right. I, I can I'll, I'll probably upload this on my channel if it's fine with uh, you. Yeah, sure, we can, we can upload it simultaneously, I don't care. Uh, let's talk about uh, trannies. Trannies? You, you're a doctor. Yeah, so I talked about it, it on my channel. Why do you think I would uh, avoid the subject? Uh, well, you told me that you don't want to talk about the... Because I, asked, I, I told you on, on one of, in one of our private conversations that uh, we want to go deeper on the tranny topic. I said, yeah, no, maybe on oh, your channel. Oh, no, 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 because I already talked it to death mm. that period of time. But mm. I'm fine talking about it. No, it's, uh, uh, you're a doctor, so, ex so let, let's go first through the easy part. Yeah. What is the medical argument for the so-called sex reassignment surgery. Okay, so um, you have to understand that doctors uh, can be affected by political ideologies as well and political correctness as well. So, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> when, when I studied it in medicine, um, I studied the classical argument, but I'm pretty sure there are new ways of thinking that uh, you know scientists are having now. But the old ways was uh, gender dysphoria. Mm. So it was a mental illness where a person doesn't identify with the body that they're in. Right now it's being um, taken over by certain radicals, uh, certain you know, new way of thinking saying that uh, gender is a social construct and that uh, you know, it's, not, it's not a mental illness, it's just that people uh, can choose whatever gender they, they want. Uh, which is interesting because if you push this idea to the point where you get a man committing a crime, and then he's arrested and he says, well, now I identify as a woman. Would you put him in a woman's prison? Mm. They do in Britain. And surprise, surprise, they have a rise in sex crimes in female jails. Yeah. That, that's where it leads. Mm. Um, so and this already happened. It's yeah. not a theoretical argument. And, it already and, and you also have the question of, um, OK, if a, a person, for example, is a child mm. and uh, identifies as a transgender at two years old or three years old, do you give him hormone blocking therapy or not? That's the argument today, that they should. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, in 2001, yeah, in 2001, 
uh, I entered into a practical partnership. I was representing an, a certain non-governmental organization with uh, what is today known as the Faggots organization, the ACCEPT. <coughs> uh, it was still called ACCEPT back then. It still had sort of similar goals, although then they were emphasizing on improving the health of the LGBT population and also on abolishing Article 200. I'm sure you know this. Article 200 was the article that criminalized homosexual relations. Yeah, and then they, they put it in uh, under rape no. for a while. No, no, it wasn't. They, no, it they did. I, I'll tell you this. Maybe you're not, you don't know. They took it away from the uh, mm. like homosexual as a mm. crime. And mm. if you read the rape, mm. it was having sex with someone who doesn't want to or someone of the same gender. Uh, yeah, but, that, <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that one didn't, didn't pass the master of the Supreme Court. So it, yeah, it, eventually, it was never eventually enforced. But Article 200 was thoroughly enforced, uh, especially in the 80s, less so in the 90s. It was a case here in Yash, um, uh, the, uh, the, affair, the Garden of Happiness, mm. where a lot of actors and political mm. people were arrested for uh, meeting in a park mm. and having, uh, like, scheduling homosexual mm -hmm. uh, relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hookups <laughs> happened a lot in the parks, of course. And uh, I joined them then. Uh, in the park? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 in, in 2001, mm -hmm. and because I agreed with their objectives. I also believed that the HIV rate in this country had to go down, and it did, partly as a result of our work. And also I believed, just like them, that in two, Article 200 had to go, yeah. because I'm a conservative. I believe homosexuality is disgusting, but it has to be legal. Not everything that's it's disgusting has exactly, to be legal. Exactly, there you go, <laughs> yes, and I don't believe the state has an has to have an opinion on what people do on their private property in their bedrooms. It's as long as they're consenting adults. Uh, abso absolutely, yes. Uh, so that's why I joined them. And in, to, in 2003, they finally uh, managed to get their first objective, to have uh, the Article 200 repealed by an act of parliament. And by 2006, 2007, the HIV rate not only went down, but it went so low that now international organizations started coming into Romania to ask what the fuck you, did you guys do? to get it so low? And the answer was, we made condoms great again. <laughs> That's uh, true. Yeah, yeah. The, the homosexual lobby had a very, very good um, partnership with several American organizations that they were getting not only cheap or f free at the uh, at the end of the consumer. Robbery, yeah. Um, yeah, they were getting very high quality condoms. Mm. And uh, we were making sure that all of those were getting to as many people as possible anywhere in the country, including yeah. the most remote areas. And lo and behold, uh, in, in six years, it made, made literal miracles. Uh, but the, the, the most of the AIDS right now are from needles and from... Uh, uh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, it's mm -hmm. very rare to be... Uh, and of, of course, during the same period, hospitals have gradually gotten better yeah. to the point that you would no longer get HIV from hospitals. You still get some other uh, nosocomial infections, but not... Hepatitis. Yeah, right. hepatitis sometimes, although even that is rare too. It used I, to be an epidemic. But, but anyway, right. Yeah, anyway, the, the hospitals have gotten gradually better and uh, the populace, even though they have never gotten sexually more responsible in the way that a conservative, a conservative <laughs> would think, but at the very least they got healthy, healthier, yeah. uh, which is still progress. But then in 2006, 2007, they started bringing the whole tranny stuff. And that was what, that was the moment when I, no, 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 you don't get it. I'm a conservative, so I'm kind of fucking out of here. I'm fine with the private health initiatives and all of that. I'm all your friend, <coughs> but not with the, with the tranny stuff. Yeah, let's, Especially let's, let's, when they brought children, because that's why I'm telling yeah. you the story. Because, you know, uh, my first contact with the transgender concept was in 1998 when, uh, Israel won the Eurovision contest with a tranny. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, the, the bearded lady, wasn't no, it? No, 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 that was more recent. No, okay. 98, it was uh, Dana International was the name of the artist. Uh, his song was was pretty good song. It's still recognizable to him, a very good song. Um, and it, it was a tranny. And that was the moment when I, when I learned what a tranny is. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of weird, but hey, whatever, their body, I don't yeah. care. Uh, I don't have to care. Uh, and even that guy, I mean, that guy is still a tranny today, and uh, of course he doesn't call himself a guy, I do. Uh, <laughs> but even he is like, no, I can't force other people to call me she. Yeah. They, they don't want to, that's okay. It's like religion, isn't it? Mm. Like, it yeah, in 98 it wasn't a religion. It was like, no, I'm an adult, I believe I'm a woman, therefore I'm gonna spend my own shekels, literally shekels, because no. he was Israeli, mm -hmm. I'm gonna spend my own shekels 
to make myself look like a woman and pass as a woman. And if people still don't want to call me a woman, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. I know I'm a woman. I, this is my exactly. truth. Exactly. That was okay, fine. I still believed he was insane even then, but I was like, okay, whatever. But then they started bringing children in. And forcing people to call. Here's and what, that's when I started going militant about it. Yeah, here's the thing that bothers me, right? Um, I used to be a militant atheist. Not mm. so much anymore. Now I think that religion has a place in society, mm. even if I personally don't believe it. But mm. I'm an atheist, and I, I was never a militant atheist. Yeah, but I was. And, mm. and the thing that pissed me off is that certain people, in my opinion, believed in um, absurd things. Like there is a magical uh, god in the sky that mm. creates everything. And not only that, but I need to live my life in accordance to this God's wishes. Mm-hmm. And the person that the Christian would tell me how I need to live my life because he has like a special connection with mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if I would tell him that the God isn't real, he would get really upset. Mm-hmm. He would get really angry. How is it different that if a person believes that they're transgender and all of my senses tell me that they're not? Like they, uh, they, they believe they're a woman and all of my senses tell me they're a man mm-hmm. and for example I don't want to have sex with him mm-hmm. and you see publications coming up that they call you trans misogyny or whatever <laughs> words they they come up with right that's worse than Islam I mean even Islam <laughs> believes that you should have a right to fuck whomever you want yeah Although, of course within the confines of marriage but still I mean even Islam is more liberal than right. And, the, and they're basically, like, you're not allowed to challenge their beliefs. Mm-hmm. And if you do, they get angry. How is this not the same with religion? And what's more interesting is I that... I think it's worse. Yeah. Here's another fact. There, there are other uh, illnesses in medicine. For example, uh, transabled people. Now, transabled people um, believe that an arm doesn't belong to them, right? And they want to cut it off. Yeah, or they should be blind. Or they should be blind and they pour bleach into their mm-hmm. eyes, right? Now, doctors don't encourage this, right? But if someone says that their dick doesn't belong to them and they want to have a surgery where they get castrated, all of a sudden that's okay. Another example would be uh, people who are schizophrenic. Now, they hear voices. Like, let's say they, they hear the radio. Especially paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah, yeah. They, they hear like uh, aliens talking to them through the radio. The solution, the treatment, is not to encourage the fact that the, the voices are real and to tell them that, yes, you're absolutely right. Or if someone has an imaginary friend, another common example, right? And say, don't sit on this chair because my, my friend is here. Mm-hmm. And if you sit on that chair, they get very angry. They get very upset, mm-hmm. right? The solution is not to encourage this behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, why is it that transgenderism is the only exception mm-hmm. where it's not only uh, good to encourage it, but if you don't, you might even get in legal troubles in some mm-hmm. countries. Mm-hmm. But beyond the legal troubles, uh, we'll get to that soon, but it's, it, it is still the moral part. Uh, again, because of the children argument. Because I can totally, I, I, I can honestly tell yeah. you that I don't give a shit with uh, adults. Fine, if they want to mutilate their mm-hmm. bodies to look like the opposite sex, yeah, that's kind of insane. And the doctors that encourage this are probably insane too. Or, or they want money. Or they want the shekels and they think <coughs> the shekels are good enough. Fine, whatever. Or NGO groups that also make money out of uh, pushing propaganda? Maybe, although I don't think it's really that profitable in the NGO sector. But, uh, okay, fair enough. In, in Britain, it was like three million pounds spent by the British government to... Yeah, three million pounds at the dimension of the United Kingdom is pocket change. I mean, it's really... Yeah, but, but, but to do, like, what? Mm. To yeah. do what? Just go and preach something fair in enough. a school? If you, fair enough. If you're one of those NGOs, you <laughs> yeah. a, higher co- a higher cut of, like, three million pounds. So I guess that's uh, relevant for one or two individuals. Yeah. But nevertheless, if it's for adults, meh, whatever. But kids, yeah. Yeah, the problem is with kids. Because it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much the same as with the, uh, with male genital mutilation. Uh, Worse. Yeah, uh, no, on the same mo- moral. Uh, because, you know, male genital mutilation destroys sensitivity, uh, d- destroys... Yeah, this, this castrates yeah, the individuals. this one it, uh, sterilizes individuals mm-hmm. because... Uh, and I'm sure, you, and I want you to tell me even more about this because you probably know a bit more than I do. Uh, it is sold to parents that, you know, you can put the kid on uh, puberty blockers and he or she will decide later or we'll see if it yeah, this that's, that, persists. That's, no, and that's, it is sold to parents as if those puberty blockers have no side effects. So first of all, the American Pediatrics Association said mm. that uh, the overwhelming amount of kids that are transgender, they grow out of it. Mm. Secondly, we know now that if you have a classroom where a kid comes as transgender, more kids will follow. And I think the reason is that the moment one comes like Billy, who no one talks to, mm. and you know maybe he's like secluded in the back of the class, he comes out that he's transgender, everyone's like, oh my god, Billy, yay, good, good. 
and, and other kids want the spotlight, mm -hmm. you know, so that might be a reason. Now, they could the need for attention. Yeah, of course. That's, that's what I did mm -hmm. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Now, as the puberty blockers go, um, there is, they didn't got invented. They, they, they weren't made in order to uh, help transgender people. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, genetic illness that people have where they don't go to puberty, where, where they go to puberty faster than normal. Mm -hmm. It's called in Romanian uh, pubertate precoce. Mm -hmm. Precocious know. puberty. Precocious puberty. Okay, thank you. See, like medical English is something that I need to work on. But anyway, so you have a kid that goes through puberty earlier, like he, he could be even the age of nine, the age of eight, right? completely abnormal and this is going to affect uh, his, his body. Early puberty tends yeah. to have negative effects. Negative effects, yeah. So you have these puberty blockers in order to make sure that you stop the, the process and you delay or it. Or it goes as slow as possible yeah. until it gets closer to an appropriate age. To an appropriate, for, exactly, right. For the onset. Nice. So, so this is what the medicine was initially made for. Now we're applying it to kids. Uh, they're and completely healthy. They're completely healthy and um, it, it we don't even know the side effects because it's uh, usually when you want to uh, make such a test you need to have like a, uh, to, to follow the population over the course of several years mm -hmm. maybe they will get cancer when they're 50 you don't know mm -hmm. yeah uh, there is no control group there, there is, is no, no control group yeah. study that we can reference in fact there was a uh, university that wanted to make a study mm -hmm. based on the satisfaction of transgender people mm -hmm. post-op um, and the university denied the study because it was politically incorrect mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this was in the United Kingdom. I remember the piece mm -hmm. of news. Uh, yes, uh, research on this is suppressed. And and the thing that I believe is that um, a lot of transgender people they uh, want to the tra uh, transition because they think that once they do so, they, their life will improve. Like everyone mm -hmm. will finally consider that they're a woman and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But once they transition, if they notice that the situation doesn't change and it's just like in the beginning, they have no more hope. They have no more option. And uh, there was a statistic that said that uh, people post-op tend to commit more suicides than people pre-op. The suicide rate is even higher than, than in the pre-op. And there, are, there, there were a, a couple of forum posts that I wanted to read on my channel, but they were so disturbing mm -hmm. that I don't think I would have managed to publish that video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But it was so heartbreaking to see transgender people that were literally crying because they know they can't reverse it. And they had to perform dilation which after the surgery, you need to understand the, the You're wound. male to female trend. Yeah, male okay. to female. The wound tries to close again, mm -hmm. right? So you need to stuff a dildo every single day. And for some, it was so painful that every single day they had to stuff an object into the, the surgery. It was just unbelievably reading that. It's, mm -hmm. it's heartbreaking, you know? Mm -hmm. And none of the activists ever talk about the downsides. Mm -hmm. None of the activists ever even mentioned that taking estrogen for long periods of time gives you cancer, gives you blood clots, Gives you plenty of medical uh, issues that would have never happened. That would have never happened. Yeah, and, and like, why, why, if why not just have the whole argument? Why not present the positive sides and the negative sides? It, essentially, we're led, we as a culture, not you and I personally, but we're led to believe through an argument of ignorance, basically. Oh, there is no evidence that puberty blockers have side effects. Therefore, they have no side effects. No, just because there is no evidence yet, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, that uh, they're perfectly safe. Of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the suppression of research is pretty troubling. I remember reading an article from N NY Mag, which is a very leftist publication. Uh, it's called how, it, how the fight for the health of trans kids led to the destruction of a career. And it was a doctor who, based upon his personal evaluation as 50 years or 40 years as a clinician. He was like, hold on a second, no, 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 these, most of these kids grow out of it. Uh, he was treating, you know, kids, um, preteen, but also teenagers who are manifesting signs of gender dysphoria. And he noticed that if we just do talk therapy and uh, basically observe things and intervene as little as possible, most of them grow out of it. Uh, and they grow out of it very happily so. Uh, and of course he got sidetracked by the activist doctors who are like, no, 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 uh, that's bigoted. That's, yeah, a, yeah. that's akin to conversion therapy. Uh, and as a result, that uh, he was sidetracked by the uh, doctors who are, what were they calling it? Gender affirmative care. Oh my God, Here, here's an interesting question, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All the left talks about is how bad it is to be a minority. Uh, okay, that, that's literally every single article, how horrible it is mm -hmm. to be marginalized. Mm -hmm. 
And if why you have, would you struggle why, why to would become you struggle? a smaller minority? Not, not even that, but why, why would you struggle to, like, if, if there is a chance that a person can become a minority or not, mm. wouldn't it be child abuse if you, if you guide them towards the path of becoming a minority based on leftist mm. ideology? I don't think minorities are having it as bad as the leftists say. Uh, the vast majority of them, <laughs> not, not in the Judeo-Christian civilization. Uh, in Islam, yes. Possibly, I guess. Uh, or at least in some Islamic countries. So, for instance, minorities in Albania are pretty fine. Minorities in Saudi Arabia or Iran, not really. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But in, no, in, in Europe, in North America, no, definitely not. Here's, here's an interesting thing about conversion therapy, which you said. Uh, sorry, what was it? Gender conversion? Uh, gender affirmative care. No, no, no. Before that, you talked about... Uh, conversion uh, therapy. Yeah. Um, there was an article published recently, a study, mm. where they complained that uh, people don't interracially marry mm. as much as they would like. So the study found out that if you screw with Tinder's algorithm, mm. if you tinker with it, you can get more people interracially marry. Now, mm. I want to make it absolutely clear, I don't give a shit mm. if people want to marry in, within or outside their race. Mm. But the fact that there are some people on a board somewhere mm. that are concerned that people, like this, this level of social engineering of society to mm. force people to, to marry... Oh, uh, to determine them. To, to determine. How is this not eugenics? Mm. Uh, it, well, <laughs> well, it's not eugenic, it's dysgenic. There is a difference. Mm. Uh, b because, uh, well, I guess it could be eugenic if you believe, well, you can't really prove, but if you believe that inter interracial marriage somehow improves the gene pool, which it's, it's, mm. it's a very dodgy claim to make, but if you establish that as truth, either by ideological means or maybe by scientific means, although that's really hard to do, then yeah, I guess you can call it eugenic. But until proven that way, it's definitely dysgenic. Yeah, but it's, it's still and like... it's immoral. Yeah, it's uh, engineering of society. Mm. And what they found is that uh, you have the website OkCupid. Okay mm -hmm. And we live in the era of technology. Mm -hmm. More and more people use mm -hmm. dating apps in order to mm -hmm. find the mate, which I don't know if it's good or not, but it is the reality. Don't, but yeah, it's the reality we live in. Is, yes. And uh, especially for a lot of the younger generation. Mm -hmm. And they found out that on OkCupid, okay you get uh, a percentage of mm -hmm. compatibility. Mm -hmm. uh, the website like uh, checks for certain mm -hmm. patterns. And, and they found out that if you fuck with the algorithm, mm -hmm. like if you would uh, say that this guy is very compatible with the person that he's not compatible, mm -hmm. the people would go out and they would date mm -hmm. and the relationship would be very successful, mm -hmm. according to them, mm -hmm. to the scientists. Mm -hmm. Now the question is uh, how long until the divorce arrives, mm -hmm. but... Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is a very dodgy claim. And the reason, there are a few, several reasons. First of all, uh, Individuals are not really NPCs. I mean, leftists are, but generally people are not NPCs. They're not pre-programmed mechanisms. So for certain segments of the population, it actually does help for them to try to form families with individuals that are significantly different from mm -hmm. them. For others, is the recipe for, basically, for disaster. Yeah, for a murder or things like that, if it's really different. Uh, because, you know, for especially for very confident people, it actually helps for them to marry with someone that they're slightly or even significantly different from them. For less confident people, marrying with the people that are very different from That's them, true. Is, uh, it's yeah. a, But it's a leftist study, they don't account for that. Mm. The very fact that they believe they have the solution and then the, the, the Not goal... Not that they have the solution, but they have the moral right to attempt to, attempt to, to implement it. And, and the, the whole thing was that at the end of the article, they were calling for NGOs and other leftist publications to shame Tinder and to shame uh, you know these uh, corporations in order to uh, adopt the changes that they were proposing. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise they would be bigoted and whatnot. Yeah, uh, the thing is that if you go get woke, you get broke. Most of the time, go woke, go broke. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Tinder is really in a business. I, I, I figured it out in the gaming industry why mm -hmm. they go woke. Mm -hmm. you, you're not passionate about video games, you said. No, no, no. But, but there is a financial reason why uh, video gamers uh, go woke. You would go woke as well if you are a game developer. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, apparently, the way you get green-lighted for a sequel, mm. or if you want to, for example, get a bonus, mm. you need to talk with your publisher, and mm. he's the one that gives you millions of dollars to make the game. Mm. Now, the publisher, uh, he wants to bring down everything to math. He, mm. he wants not the numbers. Mm. Uh, and they are trying to do something which is art mm. and subjective and turn it into numbers. Mm. And the way they do is they go to this website called Metacritic, and they look at the aggregate score. Mm. And I, I assume this happens in movies as well. Mm -hmm. And they will say, okay, if your game gets 
8.5, you get a bonus, right? If it gets 7.5, you get a sequel. Mm. If it gets lower than that, they fire everyone. Mm. And what happens on Metacritic is that video game journalists are writing the reviews. So they're not really making a game for the gamer, they're making a game for, for the, the video reviewers. game journalists. Mm -hmm. And the, the game developer doesn't care if the game sells or not, because mm. that's not his job. He gets a bonus mm. if he gets good grades from mm. the journalist. Mm. And the publisher is the one that cares overall. And by the time the publisher figures it out, you know, like the publisher have already paid for two yeah. sequels. The publisher is probably like an old man sitting on, you know, a board. Mm. He doesn't play video games, mm. doesn't understand the culture. All mm. he knows is that some economist comes up to him and mm. tells him, it's like, oh yeah, you know, this, this game did 8.5 on Metacritic. Mm. It's really good. Mm. And that's why they go woke. Mm. And I assume yeah, the movies go woke as well. Yeah, yeah, but with movies, at the very <coughs> least, it's uh, now increasingly popular to do movies outside of the grand studios. And also in movies, you always have, and even the journalists, because, and admittedly, in movies, there is also movie reviews done by conservatives. It's not, mm -hmm. a, it's not a, a, a solidified class of, like in gaming, where there's the game journalists, and those are the only people that matter. No, no, no. In, in movies, it's a little bit more democratized. Okay, TV shows, uh, you know, TV shows overwhelming. E even in TV shows, it's the same thing, because it's still movies at the end of the mm. day. And even there, you have the uh, critics review, and the audience review. They don't care about the audience uh, review. Well, actually, it turns out that they do. Because, they started? Uh, well, think about it, the uh, Ghostbusters remake with women. Yeah, it, but that, that was like such a failure. Yeah, that but, yeah, but that they one got a very it. good uh, critics review and an absolutely atrocious audience It's review. interesting to look at the contract mm -hmm. with the director and the, uh, the, the people giving him the money. Because if the contract says that the grade for the actual, um, you know, the critic review, mm -hmm. if that's big, if he gets a bonus or if he, you know. I don't know. I don't that, know. That, that is the, the thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's the fine print. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to look at it. Yeah, but the, most of these contracts tend to be confidential anyway. So unless I get someone from the from Hollywood to leak me those Yeah, yeah if, if you're from Hollywood and you listen <laughs> to that shit, please. Uh, I think I know who to ask, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Now that you've told me, I think I know who to ask. And I've already asked. Uh, yeah, I, I have a couple of guys from Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, you know, when you get the big subscriber mm -hmm. base, you, you get... I do too, you'll be surprised. Yeah. Uh, and, and because, you know, uh, this channel is small but influential. That's the point. Yeah, they, they That's how I built it. You wanted the drama. I just wanted I the want drama. I, I just want to make my news. <laughs> but anyway, they, they write the script mm -hmm. and they give blanks when it comes to the race. Mm -hmm. And after they, they write the script, if the script gets approved, they go like, okay, well, we need like two black people, we need two Latinos, we need three women, mm -hmm. you know? And that's how uh, apparently scripts are made nowadays. Oh. Well, that's kind of terrible. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, in movies, there is, uh, it just appears to be easier because there is also, there are, there are also conservatives who do, right? Maybe movies. a conservative movie that uh, came out recently. A conservative movie. Well, there are several movies who didn't did not intend to be conservative, but ended up being conservative. No, but some movie that you would think would uh, go, let's say, to to a conservative audience, and they would enjoy. It. You you wouldn't have any of the progressive bullshit in it. Mm. That's complicated. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> for instance, Yachtin with the. Uh, uh, I, I, I suck at remembering actors, but he's a Danish actor that is now very famous in Hollywood. Mm. Uh, Yachtin, The Hunt, it is about a false rape allegation by a child against the uh, kindergarten teacher. That's the movie that made that particular actor very famous. It's made in Denmark. Yeah, but something from Hollywood? Mm, something from Hollywood, that's difficult, at least recent. I guess uh, Inception would be one. Uh, that was thoroughly enjoyed by conservatives, but Inception oh, is already I know quite one. old. I know one. I didn't like it, but it was definitely very conservative. Um, the Silence, the the one where uh, they're they're trying to be quiet so that uh, some monsters don't get mm. them. Mm. Do, do you know the one that I'm talking about? I think I do. Also, the Sniper. The sniper. Uh, the the one uh, made with about about the warrior in Iraq. That was also, mm -hmm. admittedly, made by Clint Eastwood, an avowed yeah. conservative. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so the, the one, yeah, but they're very few, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one that I'm talking about, the reason it was conservative is that there was a pregnant woman and she mm -hmm. wanted to have the child. Now, mm -hmm. it was obviously very easy to have an abortion, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but she chose to keep it. And uh, there were a lot of progressive uh, reviewers that were mm -hmm. very upset about mm -hmm. the movie. Mm -hmm. um, Why? Because the movie doesn't include abortion in the script? No, it's because uh, it makes women look weak because pregnancy, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah, when you're pregnant, you're weak. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, called biology. They, they didn't There's like nothing that. bad about that. 
Well, it's. Uh, I mean, they're making historical movies. Uh, there, there was this TV show, sorry, mm -hmm. um, Troy. Yeah, yeah. And they well, have like Zeus and Achilles mm -hmm. Black. Like, you, you think you can talk about logic with these people and uh, reality? No, no, of course not. <laughs> of course not. But uh, uh, the, the, the reason I asked is because I'm, I'm still collecting examples where progressives are pissed off about these topics because I'm using them for propaganda reasons. Because I like to call progressives the pro abortion movement. Because they yeah, are. Yeah, they are pro abortion. Like, are, I'm pro choice. I'm legitimately pro choice. Yeah, you're probably pro choice, but you're not necessarily pro abortion. No. But most progressives are literally pro abortion. Yeah. And of course, they get really pissed off when I call them pro abortion because, for, first of all, they recognize the, the propaganda <laughs> tactic. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I learned from their bosses, <laughs> so I know what I'm doing. And secondly, it also makes the audience think. So they don't like to appear in front of an audience that they're literally pro abortion. No, so, I mean, but they are, and that's why I ask you. Yeah, I, I mean, in Romania, we had the uh, abolition mm -hmm. of uh, abortion, and uh, Romania was like number the ban on abortion. Yeah, ban on abortion, and, and we that were was in communism. we were somewhere within the top of retarded babies mm. because women who wanted to abort, they would uh, take. And when, when they failed, yeah, they, they would take whatever medicine they mm, knew. They would starve mm, themselves. Mm, they would drink alcohol, smoke, mm, and they would have retarded kids. And they, we also had like an epidemic of hepatitis because mm, women would use mm, clothes hangers, mm, would use all sorts of underground doctor mafia. And, so, and downstream from that, there were also the concentration camps on retarded children, the Chigid camp yeah. being the most famous of them. Yeah. yeah, and it's horrible. But So clearly, it needs to be legal and as a last resort, mm -hmm. and there should be social stigma against mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But I see it in America advertised by Planned Parenthood, so mm -hmm. almost like uh, two for the price of one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there, there was this uh, communist woman who went to the Twitter. Showing, you know, like a big belly at first and then like uh, showing herself slim. Mm -hmm. And it's like uh, before and after abortion. And she was mm -hmm. promoting that. Absolutely disgusting. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I wanted to troll Planned Parenthood IRL. <laughs> I told you the story before we started. I wanted to troll them, but the Planned Parenthood had eight headquarters in Chicago was in Southwest Chicago, one of the most violent areas in the world, worse than Venezuela or Syria. <laughs> and I could only go there if I were unarmed because Planned Parenthood is a gun-free zone. Mm. Uh, so no, I decided against it because I'm not going unarmed into one of the most violent areas. But yeah, I would have wanted to try. Can, can you leave your weapon at the door? Like uh, um, Yes, you can, but because Chicago is a gun control area, well, you first need to prove that you have a license for that gun, mm. and that's something different. You forgot the license yeah, at home. Yeah, I had forgotten my license <laughs> at home. Yeah. It was in the other pair of pants, yeah. Yeah, let's put it that way. I had forgotten my license at home, yes. So as a result, um, uh, I didn't. But that would, uh, that would have been really funny. Yeah, Planned Parenthood is a very interesting case because the left tells us that the government shouldn't be involved in, uh, in our private lives. And bel believe it or not, I agree. But I agreed consistently. That means you pay for your damn abortion. Apparently, the taxes don't go directly. There's like a legal loophole where they travel and then they arrive. Yeah, that doesn't make them <laughs> any less... Um, I mean, why should the state, I mean, at the very least, finally, we're getting to the point here in Romania where we no longer pay through our taxes to abortion. Public hospitals have to charge. They yeah. still charge less, less than they should, and they should be convinced to, to persuade. Unless to, it's uh, the health of the woman. Or well, something. I'm not talking about medical emergencies. Yeah. I mean, let's put it this way. It's 1% or 2%. Of they the always case. go for the extreme. They yeah. always go for, like, the, the mm. poor woman that was mm. raped. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, this is where, like, Ben Shapiro, and he says, uh, well, the, the way, one way to know that this is dishonest is, fine, I agree with you with all, with all of those cases. Can you agree with me that all the rest <laughs> should be banned? No. Okay, so therefore we're... You know, they, they also don't talk about the negative effects. Mm. They're so It's the same thing with the training. Mm. Like, okay, so abortion is indeed a very easy procedure mm. to do. Mm. It's very safe. Mm. If, and only mm. if you don't want to have a second child. Mm. The, when you have the first abortion, especially if it's uh, more to delay terms, uh, the instrument scrapes the wound and can cause a scar. And then when you have the uh, oval, when you have the, um, the second kid, mm. uh, it can actually implant on that scar. Mm. And you have a uterus there, mm. which is a medical emergency. The woman can die within hours if she doesn't get treatment. And usually the treatment consists in the complete removal of the uterus. Oh, so that's fucking terrible. Yeah, I mean, why don't they mention it? Mm. It's not. It's not the you know incredibly common, but it's it a, is. It is, is a risk, and, and it's not religious propaganda either. It's, it's not propaganda. It's medical science, and and they don't want to talk about it. Like mm. I have never seen you know a person that's pro-choice just talking about it. Like just inform the patient. They have the mm. right to know mm. about all the risks. Mm. 
And then, like, the left just can't conceive. It's like, yeah, but it's risk-free. And I keep telling them, yes, it is risk-free if you don't want to have a second kid. Mm. No. Uh, it just seems uh, <coughs> that we're getting pushed into the direction of uh, the childless future, which wouldn't be a terrible thing in and of itself. Yeah, we have cats. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, that can only happen provided that you don't particularly care about the perpetuation of this civilization. Because if you do, you can't really per perpetuate civilizations with other people's children. Oh, you know something interesting? Uh, most of the people that are pro, that, that are far leftist, mm -hmm. they have a very conservative way of raising mm -hmm. their kids. Mm -hmm. They usually have one or two kids, they send them to university, mm -hmm. they, they make sure they get really good studies, and then they make sure they get really good jobs. And they don't tolerate any degeneracy. Mm. You know, they're very, very conservative with the way they're raising their kids. Mm. Yeah, the, 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 that's what, that's how I pissed off an American leftist that I met in Chicago. Uh, I told him, look, with the exception of Will Smith, who has one <laughs> kid who is absolutely fucking degenerate. He came out of the closet, uh, and now I think he's uh, he thinks of himself as a woman or something like that. I mean, it's full mm. degeneracy. Yeah. Uh, but okay, Will Smith. When Hollywood will have 50% of Will Smith's, or at least 30%, let's have a third of the actors having one transgender child, uh, let's have a third of the actors with their kids dropping out in the fifth grade, uh, let's have that. And when that will be true, I'll be ready to accept the argument that maybe we shouldn't be having strong families and traditional families. It's never put up to a vote, is it? Mm. It's never, it's never ever like uh, given to the vote of the public. It's yeah, always how, how many kids of the cultural elite are gay? How many kids of the cultural elite are transgender? How many kids of the cultural elite are drug addicts? How many kids of the cultural elite have had two or three abortions? Uh, it's very rare, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And when they have an abortion, they don't go to Planned Parenthood. They go to some ah, expensive course. hospital, ah, course, you know, where, where they don't have to, to stomach the, uh, the shouts and the cries of the activists outside. Uh, that or, the, uh, or, or generally the uh, in inevitable mistakes that happen in a, in a hospital or a clinic that has so many patients. You know, the most elite ones, you, know, you tend to get your personal doctor yeah. that only cares about you this week and doesn't have I any I didn't know that. Them. Like, is there a, such a thing? This is definitely the case with the elite clinics in the United States. Mm -hmm. Of course, the price tag is um, quite high, commensurate yeah. with this particular level of care. But nevertheless, I mean, if you're in Will Smith... I would love to work like... Uh, oh, of course you do. Uh, one, one of the reasons I didn't like... Um, I, I criticize the medical system is that you work like at an assembly line. Mm -hmm. You know, you just get patient after patient after patient that yeah, you don't have time to spend with them and talk about their own personal problems. And well, that's what happens when the state owns it. But then again, <laughs> you're against privatization because well, you're... I'm not against privatization. Not anymore, you used to. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I, I'm just saying that it needs to happen slowly rather than mm. overnight. Mm. How slow? I don't have like a timeline. Mm. That's why the government hires economists. Mm. Uh, slow enough to the point where it doesn't create mass unemployment and it doesn't destabilize the economy. Mm. Well, it wouldn't create. It wouldn't create. It wouldn't destabilize the economy because there aren't that many doctors in any country. I mean, the point of doctors is for them to be. Yeah, in Romania, in Romania is even worse. Mm. Like uh, almost everyone is going to Germany, France. Mm. Uh, yeah, Italy, well, brain Spain. drain is a separate. Uh, not well, not necessarily brain drain, but work f workforce. Work drain. Uh, I, I'm trying to hire workers to renovate my apartment. Mm. And it's getting harder, isn't it? Well, welcome to the capitalist world. Raise their salaries. It will be better. They already did. I think the... Uh, the small Not enough, obviously. Yeah, but you, you have to look uh, at the fact that the Romanian economy mm. can't really compete with the German economy. Oh, yes, it can. No, it can't. Oh, yes, it can. No, I, I disagree. If you, if you start your own company, mm. can you really pay a worker 3,000 euros? And the question mm. is, if you do, mm. will you be able to find uh, jobs mm. that will... Oh, yes, you will. Uh, not, not today, but within a, a certain time frame, yes. Uh, there are already people in this country who make even more than that. Uh, uh, one of the as an unqualified worker? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, just four days ago in Bucharest, there was a huge announcement about one of the metro stations. I think it was a day store. It doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. One of the metro stations. They were hiring unqualified workers. That would, They were hoping to turn them into qualified workers within <coughs> two years. And the starting salary was uh, 1,800 euros uh, before taxes. 
So that's 900 euros. Yeah, but we're tax. talking about after tax. Like the, the thing is, like in Germany, as I understand, someone yes, who goes to work it, gets yes, 3,000 yes, after but tax. Yes, qualified workers in Germany we're don't get thoroughly taxed like they mm. do here. Our that, problem is not an economic one, it's a socialism one. <laughs> so no, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Sure, of course, we still have a, a long way to go but, until we catch up with the economics in many areas. That's true. We're doing better than but, Hungary, though. So. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, that, admittedly, that's not difficult. Uh, but in our problem is a socialism one. Uh, in, in Germany, think about it. Germany didn't even have a minimum wage until like yesterday. Like two years ago. Yeah, year. I disagree with minimum wage. Uh, yeah, no, they, we do have a minimum wage, and our minimum wage is oftentimes higher than they than than many no, unqualified workers would be able to produce. I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, when I was twelve, uh, the minimum wage was on paper whatever, but in practice, it had already been outpaced by inflation. So, you know, one of my first, mm -hmm. I have a very similar life story with Thomas Sowell. One of my first wages was one point five times the minimum wage. That was my first wage when I was 12. Yeah, I think, I think when I sucked dick at the clown at mm. McDonald's, I was also making way more than minimum wage. Yes, yes. So, you know, it, it just so happens that when you don't have a minimum wage, there there is a way to negotiate, even with the poorest and the least skilled of all, and they get the first rung on the ladder. Yeah, but here's the question from my uh, experience. If, you, if, let's say, you're a worker, okay, why would you work here when you can go to Germany? Because there is no, there are downsides to Germany too. Say street safety, for instance. And if the people don't give a fuck? Uh, well, there are also family is very important. Yeah, but most people that go are usually young men that aren't married. Uh, yeah, and and how many of them do stay in Germany and start families over there? Very not, few, but not the, not many of them. There you go. But there's enough to mm. cause a massive uh, work shortage mm. in our country. Mm. And do you know how it's going to fix? Mm. By getting people from uh, Moldavia. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I no, it's not okay because like I, I disagree with this international concept that people should have no borders and go work in another country that has a better economy than. Do you know yours. how difficult it is for a Moldavian to get a work permit here? Trust me, if he do can, you think they get work permits? Oh, most of them do. Uh, I know for I, sure. I think they travel illegally. Uh, no, they no, they don't. No, they don't. The, mm. It's uh, this, the borders of this country are, are very difficult to cross illegally. We're one of those countries that still hold military guard uh, every other one hundred meter, any all around the country. <laughs> to be honest, I, I was shocked when Americans were talking about their borders because I was like, well, "Why don't you shoot them?" Because I was with the concept from yeah, the we US. Still do. We still do. <laughs> we still shoot people still that do. try to cross the border. We still do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and when you try I, crossing illegally into Ukraine, see what happens. I was I was 16, I believe, or something like that, when I first heard about the Americans complaining about people crossing the border. And I'm like, well, why don't you shoot them? Mm -hmm. And when I talked with an American, he was outraged. He's like, what do you mean? It's like, isn't that normal? It is still normal here. It is still normal here today. And not you know, here. it's it's reversed though. In America, if someone crosses your private property, you mm. can shoot them. Yeah, but, but if they, <laughs> which, is, which is now already getting acceptable here too. After the, is it? Uh, yes, legally speaking, anyway. There, there was a scandal. I remember. Yeah, with there the, was the, the husband of Romani Yovan. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He died eventually in a tra in a car in a plane crash some sometime later. But yeah, he shot uh, um, an intruder. Mm -hmm. and he got acquitted and yeah. since then the jurisprudence of this country recognizes a form of which effectively is a castle doctrine yeah uh, which is great and now in the Senate and I might have talked second to amendment yeah <laughs> yeah the, there is a well not a second amendment we're still far away from that mm. but me and about a hundred other people in this country we're working hard for to get a second amendment by 2030 at the latest uh, following the Czech model. The Czechs mm -hmm. needed 14 years from the point of having one of the least, w w one of the highest, the, the most restricted Can you imagine laws. an armed resist movement? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Mm -hmm. No, I can't. I can imagine, however, them trying and ended up shooting each other because <laughs> they're all very temperamental. Uh, but, you know, I, I believe if, if every law-abiding citizen needs a, a weapon. Because the question is, can, the can they... Cr the criminals already have them. I agree, but the question is like, what will happen in our country when you finally get the first school shooting? Uh, and I'm questioning like how the media is going to treat it and how people we will react. We already had to public shooting, not in school, admittedly, but we had in exchange offices and in the uh, uh, they weren't media at the side. They, they weren't in the media. Yeah, the press downplayed. Many. I mean, think about it. In 2016, we had the exact as in absolute numbers. In absolute numbers, we had like 17,000 
gun, uh, fire weapon incidents. Texas had, in the same year, 17,000 incidents. <laughs> Texas is two times bigger than Romania population-wise. And guns are legal there. And guns are not just legal, but they have 140 uh, weapons per 100 people. Yeah. So every person has 1.4 weapons, whereas here it's 0 0.89 per, per, uh, per 100 people. So yeah, that, <laughs> only that is one, less than one in 100 have one fire weapon. And we still have a, an equal, an absolute number, uh, equal incidents. So you know, there are already. Uh, so you know, the, the idea that oh, we're getting the first mass shooting, no, we had them. No, my question is not that we, we, had, we did, but uh, can the press use their power in order to take away the Second Amendment just mm. as you gave it? They shall try. Whether they can do it or not, I think it's a discussion for us to have once we get the Second <laughs> Amendment. Get the second we'll man, yeah. cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, will you buy a gun? When? Of course, absolutely. I will be amongst the first customers. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. You know, like uh, Romania can actually have an industry on uh, make manufacturing we weapons. Do. Uh, but it's going to double. Oh. Like if you're going to manufacture weapons for inside the Oh, company. yeah, yeah. But long live the Kujir factory and the, <laughs> the Woods factory. Yeah, we already have quite I a know, few. I, know. We, we, I like we to call them? I call them the peace factory. Fabish <laughs> Denzista um, Yapochi. No, seriously, because I believe weapons are peace. Peace through strength. Mm. Uh, because, you know, people, especially Europeans, when they think about America, they're like, oh, they shoot each other all the time there. No, they don't. No, they don't. The vast majority of the United States is significantly safer than Unless Europe. you have, like, gang issues and, uh, uh, you know, like, gang yeah, violence. Yeah, sure, and stuff. sure. If you're uh, a drive-by shooting. Yeah, and Southwest <laughs> Chicago, as I said, is one of the areas that is the mo one of the most violent. The bloods and the cribs. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> one of the most violent in the world. But Southwest Chicago is a tiny square on the map. Mm -hmm that has maybe one million people in it, maybe, or usually a lot less than that. The United States has 320 million yeah. people in theory, in practice more, more than, more like 400 million. The people. left can't conceive, uh, yeah. you know, thinking like that. Like yes. the left, if, if you have like one person that you don't have compassion for, they mm. can't conceive it. Mm. Yeah, mm. well, I don't. I mean, <laughs> and, and nobody does, not even leftists. Of course, but they need to claim, they need to go on public yeah. and, and virtue signal about how and much And besides, can. compassion is a limited commodity, a scarce commodity. I might have compassion for my son or for my nieces. Uh, I definitely do have compassion for my wife. I may even have compassion for my neighbor. I may be the, one of those <laughs> rare people that I may even have compassion for someone in a different city. But nobody can seriously sit there and tell me with a straight face that they have an equal amount of compassion that they have for their sons or their daughters with someone random from Africa. No, it's usually uh, no. the self-interest, right? Because mm. if, like, if some shit happens in your uh, somewhere in Africa, most people mm. don't care. You know, mm. I mean, they will say, "Oh, it's a tragedy," but mm. let, let's be honest. Like, they go to bed and they mm. sleep as easy as if they, mm. you know. Mm. Now, if something happens in your country, already you start to care a little bit. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, well, this happens. Yeah, but kind you know, of if, I, if I'm from Cluj and it happens yeah. in Constanza, you yeah. probably don't care. But if it happens in your neighborhood, oh, yeah. you start to care. That's the most. That's when it gets really. It's, not, it's not because you care about the people in your neighborhood necessarily, which yep. you probably do. But it's, it's self-preservation. Exactly. Because you think like, what if I was there? Mm. You know, I, I know that place. I could. I, have, I been could there. have been there. Yeah, yes. that's problem. Uh, that's what, one of the reasons why, for instance, I particularly cared about the incident in. Uh, in the train that goes from Paris to Amsterdam, the, the, that attempted mass shooting, that basically mm -hmm. the, all the people there ended up staying alive as a result of the bravery of the American soldiers. The Americans have all have saved the French again, <laughs> because I had gone with that train a few months before. I'm like, what if it had been me in that train? Maybe it would have been the soldier. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe. Uh, it depends on the, uh, to be fair, it does depend on the angle. I mean, this, uh, you know, being a hero is also a crime of opportunity. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, uh, the, I have read reports where the shooter, like, uh, that there was the cinema case. I believe in the Batman movie, mm -hmm. there was this guy who was a masher. And uh, eyewitnesses reported how he ran out of bullets. There was a guy in front of him. He just calmly starts reloading and no one pounces him, right? Mm. Because people are just in that state of shock. Mm. They're, they're, mm. they're definitely terrified of mm. it. Mm. Yeah, and uh, th this happens, uh, and uh, I'll, be getting, I'll be getting very unpopular here, especially with your viewers. This happens because it, uh, it is no longer, mm, I'm, I'm not saying it should be mandatory, but it is no mandatory longer. Mandatory service? Yes. There should be, at the very least, a social reward for those who've been to military, to have done some military service. It shouldn't be mandatory because yeah. whenever it is mandatory, it is not efficient. 
the volunteer army is still. I like the American system where yeah. it's like thank you for your service, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's that little thing. It's very very small, mm -hmm. you know. We don't have this in Europe at all. Yeah, no. Where you have like in a, Europe is something shameful. Yeah. Uh, even here in this country, I mean, when I tell people that I did some military service because I wanted to. Not they because, were yeah, oh, you've been to the military, but <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why? I mean, oh, come on, that's fucking terrible. And I'm like, yeah, no, it is. No, but but in America, it's uh, something that they have a warrior culture. Mm -hmm. And it's viewed as great prestige. And it's called, like, thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get free shit in corporations and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's a crime mm -hmm. to say that you, you were in the military if mm -hmm. you weren't. It's called mm -hmm. stolen valor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, mm. that particular camera went down, so yeah. Uh, all right, let's wrap this up uh, by mm -hmm. um, touching upon uh, one other topic. Uh, I don't know, I have like five in my mind. Hmm. Uh, I don't know which one of them should be. Why did you choose the transsexual one? Mm, sorry. sorry? Why did I choose the transsexual one? Because it is getting relevant mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in this country too. It, it didn't used to be like that, but it, now it's getting yeah, relevant. I agree. Um, it, there have been at least five different attempts to get this normalized here. We as conservatives have managed to win the all f in all five of them. The problem is that we have to win every single time. You have to support the church. Yeah, the left <laughs> only wins has to win once. Yep. Th then it's getting really difficult to work, turn that around. It can be done, and it will be done, but it takes a lot of time. Right. We have to win every single time. We have to beat the left. It's like, uh, you know, liberty is like um, a clean car. You have to, uh, every, t every day in the morning, you have to clean your car. <laughs> if you fail to clean your car today, nothing happens. If you fail to clean your car uh, three days in a row, it's still okay. But if you fail to clean your car for a month, it's already full of dirt. If you fail to clean your car a in year. a year, it's already a different color. If you fail to clean your car for five years, it's no longer a car. Yeah. I agree. Uh, mm. And it's interesting that uh, you bring this up, to be honest. Uh, the Americans have a saying, liberty is won every generation with the blood of the patriots. Uh, no, yeah, no. Liberty has, uh, the tree of liberty has to be watered with the blood of tyrants and patriots. Mm. And the liberty is one generation away from being lost. That's from Ronald Reagan. So, you know, you're, you just put two yeah. famous quotes into one. You need to upgrade your level of knowledge. Well, no, no, uh, you know, <laughs> the, saves me time. Mm -hmm. I just give the two, the one to punch. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what, what were the other things you wanted to... Uh, no, I guess I'm going to ask um, uh, the, the last question is, would, would be this. Uh, what's next for your channel? I don't really have this uh, futuristic plan. I mean, my mm -hmm. channel is mostly for entertainment. I, mm -hmm. I want to make people laugh, present the news in a way that, uh, you know, will get people interested. There's, there's better people that do what I do mm -hmm. uh, at a much better level. I don't want to go, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. I want to stay the same. Mm -hmm. You know, if I get 100,000, I'm happy because uh, if you grow a lot, then people start noticing you. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they notice you, then you can get Alex Jones. You can get uh, you know a lot of uh, bad publicity and stuff. You just use you just made Alex Jones a verb. You get yeah. Alex yeah, Jones. Yeah, Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, no, he was the first. He was the first, and it was the reason that he was the first mm -hmm. because uh, people wouldn't defend him. Mm -hmm. You know, they go for something that's. Uh, um, a little bit iffy to defend, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, conspiracy theorists, oh, he was mocking the, the family. If I had the ability, I would have defended Alex Jones. I, I defended Alex Jones. Uh, yeah, I didn't have the ability to because I, I was not aware of the scandal. Quite frankly, I, I, I don't I, think I, you could have anyway. Uh, yeah, but I, did, I wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, but now I defended the most horrible people on earth all the time. I defended Beyonce. <laughs> I'm not joking. I have a video on this channel called In Defense of Beyonce <laughs> and the Sweatshops. And I explain, through the capitalist perspective, <laughs> why the sweatshops are good. <laughs> because they are. Jesus. And, uh, you know, they, they accuse her that, oh my God, she's, she's, not. she's exploiting. <laughs> no, no, they are. They absolutely are. Uh, they're, they're accusing uh, Beyonce of exploiting poor women in the third world. And I'm like, good. <laughs> because that's, <laughs> oh how those, that's how those women will be having a, a, few, a superior standard of living. Because, you know, why do, the, why do people choose to work in sweatshops? Because all the other alternatives are significantly worse. Mm. In Bangladesh, th th that's why even leftist economists, Paul Krugman defends sweatshops. Why? Because even Paul Krugman had to admit, he, uh, although admittedly at first he was like, no, no, that's impossible. Eventually yeah. he, had to admit, <laughs> he, he had to admit that banning sweatshops does only bad things. In Bangladesh, 
they were having even kids, you know, 12, 13 year olds working in sweatshops. And the West was like, oh, that's terrible. It should ban them. And they, they shamed Bangladesh into oblivion and they banned sweatshops. They were like, okay, fine, because we don't want to be yeah. boycotted by the richest countries in the world. So fine, they banned sweatshops. The result was the highest amount of child prostitution ever in human history. Jesus. Because when the kids had no more factories to work in, they still needed the income. Yeah. So they went to the profession that would still accept them. As it turns out, there were many people willing to pay to fuck 11-year-olds hmm. and 12-year-olds. That was terrible, yes. Yeah. And to their credit, other countries, Thailand and whatever, they were like, you know what? We'll do business with the Middle East if the West boycotts <laughs> us, but we're not banning the sweatshops. And guess what happens? 20 years, this was happening in 96, 97. Now we're 20 years down the line. Most of the countries that were full of sweatshops 20 years ago, most of them no longer have them. Mm -hmm. There are very few of them. Or yeah, and then, uh, uh, because once academic the economy, agent, if you know the guy, also made the once, same. Once the economy grows sufficiently, you no longer need, you can afford not to have sweatshops. Correct. Yeah. I mean, think about it. In the US, the sweatshop, uh, the bands that, the laws that ban sweatshops came into the 70s. When there were no more sweatshops. Mm, there was no more sweatshops anyway. But the actual uh, end of the sweatshops have came in the 30s. Uh, in Sweden, technically... Yeah, but China has sweatshops and they have an economy that... Uh, uh, well, the, yeah, but the, the economy being, being uh, you know, the closest thing to the... You know, people ask, what would Germany look like? China, if, yeah, if Nazi national, Germany. Yeah, would Nazi like Germany with yellow people. That's economically, not economically socially. Speaking, yeah. Yes, economically. <laughs> Although we can argue even socially, but definitely mm. economically, yes. But then again, even in China, there are very few children in the sweatshops. There are many young people, yes, 17, 18, 19, 20, yes. But not, not too many sweatshops with the 11 year olds or 10 year olds. Mm. There are still a few of those, but not too many of them. 10 years ago, there were a lot of them. Not too many. So you're, you're thinking that in the future they will drop them completely? If they keep on this quasi-capitalist course, <laughs> quasi -capitalist. Uh, yes. If they become fully capitalist, they will no longer need sweatshops. In the I don't think form. they will ever become full capitalist. Uh, well, I, I will never say ever because... Well, not in my lifetime. Uh, yeah, probably not in, not in our lifetimes, yes. Because it is really hard to govern a country that has 1.4 billion people. You, you can't have a dictatorship in capitalism. Mm, well, you know, she made it, uh, so you can have... Was he like really the type of dictator we had in Romania? No. That's no. the thing, right? No, he so was a dictator, but you know, dictatorship, not all dictatorships are created equal. So for instance, criticizing Pinochet could get you into prison. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the dictatorship was mostly on set and social aspects. Yeah. Nothing on economics, almost nothing on values. But only certain, so you know, so you're criticizing Pinochet was no, the fact is, I'm thinking you have a free market, mm. right? And then you're going to get corporations that mm. are insanely wealthy mm. and they can rival the government. Mm. So you can't, you know, the dictator is going to want to crack down on that because mm. he will view it as an affront to his power. Not necessarily, not necessarily. If, uh, I mean, in the Pinochetian <laughs> times, it was like, look, you have to work with the government on certain issues. And in return, we're not going to crack down on your wealth. Mm -hmm. You pay your taxes just like any other business, and we're all good. Yeah. We're not going to, uh, we're not going to attempt to actively harm your interests That's as a corporation. Yeah. I think I think it's an example that as long as you don't actively or even by mistake harm my interests as a dictator. Yeah. Uh, so it can be done. I mean, uh, w w this is one of the few things that the left says that is actually true, namely that dictatorship is not inherently incompatible with capitalism. Yeah, that's true, but it's very hard. It is, yeah. I mean, Pinochet is the only example in history uh, of a dictatorship that actually functioned and it still had, objectively speaking, a 47% approval rate at the end of it. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I was telling you, they, they did a the referendum, Pinochet uh, did a referendum asking people whether they want him to continue to be their dictator. This was the language. Yeah, it was said. very close. Uh, he, he had more support than his commie at the beginning. No, uh, yes. <laughs> and then uh, he had the, some more support than, he, than the commies at the end of his term. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, even today, at least a third of the Chileans not only do think that Pinochet was great, they greet each other on the I street. Am. Viva Pinochet. You mentioned this. Yeah. So, the, yeah. so, so any other questions? Because uh, we're in Eastern Europe and it's getting a little bit chilly. Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> really? Uh, well, maybe we should ask the owner to turn on the heat. Right. Uh, I guess that would be enough for now. And maybe yeah. next time uh, you'll come to Cluj and we can do the... This, yeah, the, uh, the San Francisco from Romania. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> you have a direct flight from here to Cluj, so you don't have the excuse that, oh, it's taking forever and whatever. And you're a bourgeois motherfucker, so you can afford <laughs> yeah. the 20 euros.
Thank you for coming. Wasn't that cheap? Sorry. That cheap? Yeah. yeah. Capitalism, well, capitalism is, is awesome, isn't <laughs> it? Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having watching. me. And uh, see you soon. Yeah.